So this is one of the local referendums and petitions acts. Sorry, not the local one, the national one of the major ones, two thousand act. And um, this is ridiculous. This act. This is basically what Edward Fitzgerald's talking about in his Smoke and Mirrors book, um, where the government are corrupt. Really, they're writing contradictions in law. And I think on purpose, and I think they seem to do it, it seems to be a tradition, a thread that runs back in time. I don't know whether it's partly because they don't understand the law and other people made mistakes and they kind of think that, oh, it's, that's what you do, or whether it's just their own aloofness. But these here are the rules for, well, they're the rules for <coughs> publishing and it's saying that when you're publishing information about referendums and so forth, elections, you've got to have certain information on it, like who issued it, who it was provided by, and so forth. Actually, I've got a couple of election board samples, and it tells you who it's promoted by and so forth. But when it's a newspaper, the thing with the news, the publisher having the name and address of the publisher on it... Um, the actual publisher themselves are the newspapers. So it actually tells you about, you know, the newspaper themselves have got their own address and contact details within the newspaper itself because they're the publisher of the newspaper, right? Now, what this bit I've highlighted here in blue, though, it's very, very contradictive because it goes all these laws about getting prosecuted or convicted if you don't follow the regulations. But then in that blue line, it refers to the enactment, which, or an enactment, which you would naturally and intuitively think of the right to petition, right? Immunity. And it refers to part one not being applicable. So part one of this section, right, it's saying that part one's not applicable. If you're using a certain enactment, which clearly would be the Bill of Rights, right to petition, right? And ironically, out of this whole section here, I recorded this on my computer and I'm kind of playing it back on the phone now um, so I can record my voice over the top of it. I don't know whether the resol pixel resolution will be diminished or not. but So, um, now, on this whole page here, there's like part one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And all of them have got letters, except one of the parts, which has got a one and two subsection. And of that subsection one, it refers to you people not being liable to, to, to these um, punishments if they don't provide the right information. So of all this page, but that's a subsection one of another part. But it's the only bit in it that's got a number one next to it, other than the opening number one. So it, it again, it's almost poetic that they've got this kind of like um, misleading coy um, sort of style and representation to it, which is kind of like misleading, but almost poetic, some sort of poetic laureate kind of um, joke, you know, the whole way through the whole thing. So, but it clearly does mean the first, the first opening part. Now, if the first opening part doesn't apply, then how can anything, any part of it apply, right? But it, but it, see, but it, it makes out if you've got it on there. So it, 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 it's talking about, you know, now this is relevant to me. When I was doing petitions, I actually made my notices and I put on the notices that I was using the enactment, the right to petition. So I actually gave notice that I was using the enactment and couldn't be prosecuted. Now, I didn't actually have my name and address on or who'd published it. But the, remember that these rules are for the referendums and elections, but they're all, they all are petitions. They're all petitions. And when you petition for a referendum, you're still petitioning in, in connection with a referendum. So 
it 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 does apply, but we find this this is exactly what this Edward Fitzgerald is talking about, smoking mirrors. Um, it's a classic example. Now, I actually started looking at this particular act, this 2000 act, because I was looking for some rules for local referendums. It has got some rules for running referendums in this act, um, which I'm going to start reading. But these sections stood out to me. And also, funnily enough, I happened upon the section which has some rules about broadcasting, because it's relevant for publishing in the newspapers about elections, referendums and petitions because of the fact that we've got issues with YouTube. You know, we've got issues with these social media platforms and publishing platforms like YouTube and Facebook where we publish videos which are advertising these things. And it's suggestive that if there's not an election running, it actually... It's looking like that YouTube might not be allowed to actually have any video. It, this this might be a bit far fetched to propose, but it when you read this, it's actually making it sound like YouTube um, can't have any election videos when elections aren't running, or if or, or when only that election is running, because it, it's talking about the television stations not featuring any I, i'm also looking at robert f kennedy as well you know for like robert f kennedy when they're refusing to put him on there well you can't actually feature anyone who isn't running or isn't in an election so there are some rules around it they're not meant to feature people who aren't running an election right um and but yet they are meant to have this fairness do doctrine, which is what Robert F. Kennedy was talking about. But it all, there are requirements for newspapers to publish certain things and so forth. But it, if this is true, this law, and if it's right, it could be the case that YouTube might have to actually remove a lot of political material. But then that doesn't include live cases which are actually running at the moment or ongoing so if you've got you know if you've got a case that's live that's ongoing or you're pursuing then it should be on there but if when, once you're no longer pursuing it or, or or it's over then maybe it should be removed but this is when we get into the edward fitzgerald smoke and mirrors because all of these rules really all and any of them you could say that at least you're not... Well, it says that you're not liable to be convicted or prosecuted of an, for an offence. So when you actually declare that, you know, you are using the right to petition, that it's acknowledging that you can use that enactment and not be prosecuted. So if that's the case, why make up the rules? Well, that is itself the conundrum in the right to petition clause if you can't be held to any commitment. Because if you can't be held to any commitments, how can you be held to any standing orders of parliament or any rules or regulations or further enactments? You can't. It's sort of like a conundrum. When we look at the Professor Karen Bowie paper and when we read all the things that people were getting prosecuted for you know, like meetings in public and all these other things and rebellious behaviour in public and all this so forth. You, you thought they'd make these commitments, um, you know, so it protects you completely. Like, you know, this Chris Carr guy who's bringing all these charges against the Stop Cop City protesters. Th these are what the Scotland um, Petition of Right protects you from. You know, all the lieutenants, lords, commanders, judges, all just basically throwing convictions at you trying to make up convictions or, or you know, basically just, just trying to, you know, trying to think of ways to prosecute you or, or, or um, you know, conv convicting you for anything. So it, it does protect. So, but, but why do they make the rules up in the first place then? Well, I think it's because they've got to have some sort of regulations or procedures um, but really, you can't be helped to any. But if you didn't have any, then it would be a little bit maybe chaotic or not. But there's not much to it. You know, obviously, if you don't have any signatures and no one's actually written a request, then there's no request to read. So 
if you don't have a request, there is not one to read. And if you don't have any signatures, there aren't any people who support it. So on merit of the fact of, you know, it's almost like the Heinsberg uncertainty principle. You know, if you, it's like, you know, if you have nothing there, there is nothing. If you have a notice there asking for something, you have one. And if you don't have any signatures supporting it, there aren't any. But if, you, if there are signatures supporting it, then they're there. And on merit of the fact that, you know, how can you verify these? Well, you know, if it has their address on, you can verify it. This is all logic, but you wouldn't need any rules or regulations to do that because it, it, it's like you just can't verify them if you don't have the details. And if, if you do, you can. So it's almost kind of like, you know, uh, you know, if a hole in the bucket, you know, if there's a hole in the bucket, there's no water there. You know, if you've got signatures with names on, and addresses and you can verify them and ask them and you've got a re asking for something then you can read it and you know what they're asking for and you can check the people but if you haven't you can <laughs> so you can't check them so you don't have anything so it's like you don't really need the rules because if you ain't got a, a written piece of paper asking for something or you're even digital and you haven't got any people supporting it you've got nothing so <laughs> you know this is it um uh, but if you've got support in, you know, if you have their names on, then you can, well, you can prove that those people support it. Rules or no rules, if you see what I mean. So there is some irony. There's kind of like a logic behind an obviousness to it. And at the end of the day, what are rules? Um, therefore, now, all these rules they've got here about, you know, being charged with an offence or prosecuted just for not having, you know, um, something written on there. The fact is that if the right to petition didn't exist and it didn't say you couldn't be prosecuted and it didn't say that, you know, you were protected, then you couldn't say that that law existed and you couldn't claim it. So it, it does exist and you can claim it. And if you put it on your material, then you're using that clause and law and it doesn't really matter if you have your name on it or not. Um, but you've got to be asking something on there or, 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 or asking someone to be elected. So it, it's almost kind of like some sort of um, logic game or puzzle that is the, the answers are... It's, if you treat it as self-explanatory, um, it all makes sense. This may be beyond the context of this particular act, but um, now... When I when we get on to broadcasting, this act has also got some rules for broadcasting. It's saying that, you know, when when there are elections and referendums and, you know, things on, which there are always petitions and elections and referendums going on around the country and all manner of things, it's saying that in to do with broadcasting and television, this is now coming into the area of Jacob Reese Mogg and GB News. Now those Ofcom rules were Ofcom rules, but they didn't actually particularly indicate any particular acts of law this will be relevant to professor tim wilson and to the select committee and i'm, I'm sure that P professor tim wilson will be interested in this and he should read this act it does say that me particular members of parliament and it goes into detail and i've actually i've put a song up on bank camp and i've actually got the i you know, like I've got the screenshot here of this. I've got the screenshots of each particular. There's about three pages that are relevant of the legislation, and I've put them to that Professor Tim Wilson excerpt track that I did because, and I've highlighted all the legislation, which you can check up and look at, look at it. And when you read it, it actually does say that even if anyone would, even if that there's something that could be could be interpreted. That not even is interpreted. It doesn't even have to be absolutely interpreted. It says if something could be interpreted as trying to persuade people politically, either one way or the other, coming from someone who's a member of parliament, basically, and, and getting paid on the payroll of parliament, then all out to broadcast, right? And... It, it, it states that you know, that, you know. Basically, what it says is that how I interpret it and how I work it out is this: it's it's who Mog is and his position. Mog 
when Mog is an MP, right, he isn't, he's never not representing Parliament. He is, he, he can't not be himself, if you see what I mean. So it doesn't matter whether he appears as a presenter, he can't get out of the fact that he is Mog and he is an elected MP. Now, what the legislation refers to is people who are under employment of parliament. Now, you can't suddenly be not under the employment. Oh, I'm not under the employment of parliament today. That's my Wednesday job. No, but you are. <laughs> you work for them. You either work for them or you don't, right? It's saying that they're not allowed to influence people in elections or politically, and even if it's not absolutely um, interpreted as influencing them, even if it, it says even if it could, could be, even if it could be interpreted as influencing them, it shouldn't be on. Um, and it isn't only at the times of ele when the election's running. It says that even in connection with it, even if it might be running at some point, if they're going to influence them. And this is why they're not meant to be on there, right? And and it, it actually, it doesn't distinguish between um, whether it's a news program or a entertainment program, because it's actually not about, it doesn't matter what channel it's on, who who's... Um, you know, what, if, if it is meant to be a news programme or not. It's actually about the person. Who is this person? They work for Parliament. You either, are you employed by Parliament? Answer the question, yes or no. Right, you are. Or are you elected minister? Right. You know, you, 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 you this is it. And I don't think Ofcom even, Ofcom have got their rules and regulations, but I don't think that either they've ignored this act in the same way that Max Hill managed to somehow ignore um, the entire country, um, Town and Country Planning Act and statutory instruments for it um, in the Angela Ditchfield. It, it, it's on par with that. But there is this kind of ironic slant to it all. And that ironic slant to it all is coming back to this page that I've got in front of me here. And this page has that ridiculous clause in it which I've highlighted in blue there, right? Which basically is um, saying that none of it all applies. <laughs> it's almost like, oh, if you call it the, oh, if you call it, if you want to call this legislation and shout it and, and use it or even put it on your material, then you aren't liable to be, co to be convicted or prosecuted for failing to have the correct information on there, right? Which is a, if you look halfway down here, there's this clause I, and then I, I. And that is the fact that it's I, you know, and you, oh, can you see, can you understand this? Can you see this? So, and that I clause is also around that issue of not being liable to prosecution. But it, it actually does refer to number one, part one. And if, if, so if that's not applicable, then none of it is. So, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if Mog has read this because, you know, he's not stupid. He's got businesses. He's an MP. He's keen on legislation. He'll read all the election and referendum rules. So, in a way, I think Mog, in the back of his mind, you see, if that doctrine applies on this page to these rules, then it must always apply to anything. And that is the irony in the right to petition. Now, on that basis, I truly believe that Mog kind of believes in his head that, well, uh, I can't be prosecuted you know, if I have on this programme or not anyway. You know, right? And none of the rules apply. But if, but if he truly believes that, and he's acting like that, then he knows that it applies to all of us, including you, me, Angela Ditchfield, Jeremy Corbyn, whoever, anyone. So, in a way, he advocates the right to petition and immunity, and he believes in it. But it doesn't just apply to elected MPs, it applies to us as well, because they don't get elected unless we petition for them to be elected, and they didn't have a parliament unless we petitioned them to hold the parliament. And like in the... Um, claim of right scotland act you know 
elected MPs should have the right to secure freedom of speech uh, and debate in Parliament. So why does the Speaker throw them out then? Well, they can't be prosecuted and convicted. Um, well, that's not securing it. To secure the free speech in Parliament and secure debate, that means to hold you in to the chamber, to secure that you are engaged and not disengaged, completely and totally free to speak. Now, that means that the whips and the order, 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 you know, the speaker, that means that they themselves, when they punish people, are speaking a load of tosh. Absolutely, it's just rubbish. Because that's not securing the chamber um, with the MPs into debate with complete free speech once we've elected them. And... As for them getting there, the only way they got there is because we were able to petition freely and speak freely in order to elect them. And this is how the clause is all tied together, which I've shown with the right to petition, because they're all ap applicable. They're all cross-applicable. You know, the free speech applies to petition and so forth, which is like the First Amendment, you know, the, the right to petition and um, gather peaceably and use the press are all the vehicle for... They're all the medium for the whole thing of of airing the grievances, sending and transmitting them. So it, it's we the people's freedom of the, 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 to to gather together as people um, to speak freely and to publish things. It's not actually the, the press for their own press sake. It's actually in context of we the people. This is a constitution in order to facilitate um, political mechanisms, right? It's for political mechanisms um, of all of us. Um, and, and that's what I'm one with with YouTube. So, so with Reese Mogg, these rules actually render Mogg... It's this act that renders Mogg's um, GB News presence unlawful, right? Now, if he wants to try and claim, you know, the right to petition and it's all a load of rubbish, then he might as well just claim that all of the acts of legislation are a load of rubbish for petitioning. Um, you know? But this this one's on this page for information that is required on the document. But um what I've been trying to find, I've been trying to find the actual rules for local referendums. There is a local referendums and petitions act. Um, 2011, but that's for changing um, structure of the council. So where's the one just for a normal referendum? Well, you're meant to be able to petition about any subject you want, so why would you be restricted to only petition about changing the structure of the council when you can have a referendum of any subject you want? It sets out a procedure and some rules, right, and a basis and how many, you know, like getting 5% of signatures, but apparently the council can act on anything anyway. This is what they're doing in Stop Cop City at the moment. They're saying, well, you know, we've achieved 58,000 signatures or whatever. Um, we, we, they've got 116,000. They've got a lot more than they needed. Now, if they don't achieve that, can the can this city still hold the referendum even if they don't achieve it? Well, they're apparently saying that the councillors can uh, make a decision to go ahead with it. But now they're saying whether or not it goes ahead, whether they get the target, or if they get the target, can they go against it? Well, you actually are overriding the council. You are, you actually are overriding the chamber because what you're doing is you're getting more signatures than what your representatives. When you elected them to represent you, you're getting more signatures than what they got to get elected. So what you're doing is you are... You are over, you're outvoting their, the power you gave them to represent you. You are, you, you're overriding that power. Um, that's how it's, that's what it's meant to be interpreted as. Um, so this, I'm absolutely certain about this. If you read the clauses in this act about the broadcasting and so forth, with clarity, it does suggest that even if you're actually there's not a referendum happening now, but then there's one being or there might be one coming, and it could be construed as influencing it, then that that's a no no. And also, if if you're working for Parliament, not if you're working for Parliament while you're on the station, but if you are employed by them, you know, if you're an elected MP, so be, you know, so all, all Reese Mogs, you see, Reese Mog is Mog, and his opinion is. His opinion. So, because he's a member of a party, 
the Conservatives, and because he's an MP, how could he come out with anything that, which wasn't in favour of his party? And even if he claims that, oh, uh, it's not in favour of it, then it might be in favour of another party. So that's in favour of another party. So he can't get out of it because whatever his opinion is, it's one way or the other. So it's almost it's like on the knife blade edge because where, whenever he says something, he's giving you an opinion one way or the other. And that's what you're not allowed to do. Give someone, swear someone's opinion one way or another if you are elected in regards to voting. And that's why he's not allowed to be on there. Not on a programme like that. Now, we know we've got Parliament and the air debates, but those are the debates of what are taking place, which he elected to do. The TV shows aren't Parliament, and that's why they're not meant to be on there. Um, I mean, he, he even puts people like Tice under question. He's even talking about if people might um, assume positions to become elected. Now... They really need to have to change a lot. This is why we're having this whole digital media and social platform thing has gone a bit crazy. But there's also some legislation in here that makes it... If if there's an election not going on or not happening, you're not actually meant to have any programmes on about it. So that puts a question to YouTube. Should YouTube, I, I've been arguing that, you know, you've got immunity and so forth and YouTube can't take stuff down. But then again, we come back to this blue bit highlighted on here and this clause, which it, it's like the Joker card of the deck, which it, it, it always seems to override all the rules because you can't be held to any commitments. And they know that. And that is why it's there. Why is that there? Why is it there? And why have they got that joke clause halfway up the page on I1, right, which is, you know, suggestive of that doctrine. And then, but the first clause at the start, which makes the whole page valid or not, he, he's saying that, you know, so, but it's almost like if you know that and if you call it and if you use that, then they say that it's talking like you can have it. But if you don't, you can't. It's almost like Angela Ditchfield. She didn't call it, you know, so so they didn't give her it. It's like Max Hill, but he should know, you know, you can't prosecute someone under an act when there's, an, there's a completely different act that deals with it, you know. Um, this is the thing. But then again, it, but the thing about all this is that, you know, People go about daily business and their jobs and lives and leisure and sport and other things and aren't always politically engaged. So we're talking about when you do politically engage, when you are doing petitioning elections and referendums, um, and it's clear that you are doing that, um, it, it, it jokes at the rules around it for the people who know about you know what the law is. It's almost kind of like um, an in-joke. It doesn't really matter if, if you're not engaged in politics. You know, there are plenty of things you can do in life that aren't engaging in politics, like, you know, going to play golf or, you know, going to the swimming baths or going to the seaside or going on holiday or, you know, baking a cake or knitting you know, thousands of pursuits and activities. So it does actually only really apply when it comes to political endeavour and engagement, and that's where the issues are. So, you know, it's almost like saying, well, therefore, well, what about on YouTube, you know, if, or, or, or these TV channels if they can't have it, but if you call that, then you, you can have that. So what Mog needs to do is confess now, he can either say, okay, you know, you know, I, I am just ignoring it because it doesn't apply. So then he's admitting that it doesn't apply for any of us, right? None of us can be able to commitment. So then what's he going to do about Extinction Rebellion and just stop oil the rebellious behaviour in public? You know, he's not um, giving them a pat on the back and saying, no, you know, it's Al Mog will help you out. You know, Mog's, no, Mog's not help, to help yourself, Mog. Help yourself, Mog, don't help anyone else. No, Mog's not just, you know, I'm helping myself, I'm helping myself, it's all about Mog, you know. Well, actually, you know, either do all these rules and clauses apply or not, and if they do, then, you know, then Mog, he, he absolutely shouldn't be on there. It explicitly says, right? 
And that is now what Ofcom needs to decide. But if I think that if Ofcom decide that, you know, Mog can just ignore all these rules as well, then Ofcom have got to do something about YouTube and say, well, you, you know, you have to put all our political videos back up, you know? Uh, and, and that freedom of the press on YouTube, you know, it, it, it most definitely is the First Amendment, the, the right of use of the press and free speech and it is all for political engagement. And then you've got the invention of the electric telegraph. Why call it a telegraph? Why have the newspaper called the telegraph? And then you've got the telephone and the mail to post. And now you've got these devices, some of which illuminate, which I'm holding in my hand now. And, you know, any letter, word or symbol on these phones is meant to be an advertisement, you know, is an advertisement, which YouTube have got adverts popping up all the time. Anyway, we know that. And those are the ones that are protected, you know, and YouTube actually can't make a policy on it because there's a requirement to publish. We're actually given directions by Parliament to publish by Parliament's website. They tell you to share them and publish them when you're running it. When you're running a petition on 38 degrees on change.org, you know, um, and then, you know, you, you comply with this most of the time anyway, because, you know, the, the sites that you publish it on, they've got their own contact details and addresses on those sites, right? Now, as for your own details, if you register your email address, um, you know, and when you when you draft these documents, like on 38 degrees and change dog, and, and with Google, you're registering accounts and all this thing, you're still complying with it. This also talks about um, the electronic communication, you know, an address. It, it is true that in law, an address does mean also and it can be an electronic email address or a physical written address and i knew that i'd read it somewhere and it does it does have a it does have information about that saying that address numbers or letters that are contactable of a person whether electronical or you know referring to a physical you know, address that you can basically some means by which you can transmit something to contact someone, right? And that is why, like on thirty-eight degrees, you know, they, they've got to have the email addresses on the petitions. You know, when they print them out, you know, not withhold the data. So I'm gonna, I probably send this to Professor Tim Wilson and to Ofcom because I don't think Ofcom have scrutinised this act when it does apply. I think they've got their own rules and regulations. And Professor Tim Wilson read out the clauses like, you know, no um, uh, serving MP, you know, may take part in a news program, blah, blah, blah. But that's just like the guidelines. That's like, you know, the abbreviated, you know, where did this come from? Where did Ofcom pull this from? Is this like random? Did they just conjure it up? No, it's actually based on solid legislation apparently enacted legislation and then when you read this enacted legislation like i'm showing you now then it actually will actually mog can't even mog be it's i am mog i am an elected mp and you can't rub that off you know well yeah i'm not working as an mp today but i am one <laughs> he can't not be one when he is it's elected MPs being on television and broadcasting when they are in a position to influence people one way or another, or even construed as, right? And that's what it says, even if the election is not actually on. Now, parliament debates are, you know, a parliamentary debate is parliamentary debate. Um... What what they don't do in parliamentary debate is, you know, try and encourage people to vote for parties. Because once you get elected, then you're serving and representing the people, right? But they're not that they're not supposed to um influence people, you know? Either way or the other, in in the voting, you know. They, they, you know, when 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 someone's running and there's election on, you know, and they're saying, you know, you know, support a certain side or whatever, it, it's not the same as what, what they're setting out in here because there's, there's an unfairness to it, 
And what they're trying to do now is, I think they've tried to kind of like swamp it. They've flooded it. And what they've done is they thought, right, if we, like GB News have thought, right, if we've got Neil Oliver on and if we've got, um, you know, like, um, it actually, this dis- distinguishes the BBC as well. This this distinguishes the BBC from other um, platforms because it, it's public. It's meant to be, you know, it, it license fee payer, you know, to inform, educate, and entertain impartiality. He's suggesting that other channels, you know, aren't, haven't got that doctrine. So what they've done is they've got Neil Oliver, they've got Mog, they've got Tice, they've got a few people from different parties and they've just chucked him on there and they thought, right, we're, rep- we're representing all sides now, so, you know, but that's that's not the point. According to this legislation, they can't do it. Now, this clause for using the right to petition, like which is like the joker card of the deck, it's only on this page to do with having the right information on the advertisements. So, um, on the promotional material, sorry. Well, same thing. So, you know, it, it, it doesn't have this page on the one, you know, on the page when, you know, should Mog be on there or not. So, you would probably, you know, you would be inclined to think that, therefore, this doesn't apply to that. But the irony in it on this page, in the context of this page, is that there there is some... It's almost as much of a contradiction as the... um, as this statute itself, you know? But we know what it means now through the logic of, of all of the clauses are, are, are cumulative to, to, to the same process. They all work together and they're all self-explanatory, you know, um, like free speech, um, you know, for matters that are going to be debated in parliament and so forth. Obviously, you know, you wouldn't be able to elect someone because how would you debate, you know, how would you be able to debate who you're going to elect and so forth, you know? Which is what, that's what they were doing. They were prosecuting people for even meeting in their own homes and having debates and speaking about things. So they made it so all prosecutions are illegal and commitments. So you, you, you can't be prosecuted for free speech. And then the next clause is free speech and secure debate in parliament, right? Which obviously, if you can't be prosecuted for petitioning, right? Then you got free speech, obviously. Now, the secure debate in Parliament for sitting MPs, but they don't secure their own debate. In fact, the spe- Speaker unsecures it. Um, you know, <laughs> he unsecures it. Now, have the MPs, when they meet in Parliament, got immunity? Is it our immunity for petition? Once that, once we've petitioned for their election and they're elected, they're allowed free speech in Parliament, but are they using the right to petition clause? Because they are not really, they're not the ones doing the petition, we are, right? They're the ones who debate it and they've got right for secure of free speech in Parliament. So what Jeremy Johnson QC refers to is this um illegal prosecutions you know for matters decidable debatable in parliament which essentially is speaking freely about things matters in parliament right which that cross compares exactly with the scottish version you know the the um, petition of right and so forth so Illegal prosecutions by the King's Bench for matters, you know, connection with all matters that can be debated in Parliament. Well, we petitioned to get them there, the subjects that we're raising. Um, what would you be prosecuted for once you're elected in Parliament? There's actually less to be prosecuted for in Parliament because all that you're doing in Parliament is actually doing the debates and the conversations. Right, securing open debate and free speech. That's all you really need when you're in the chamber, sat down. Uh, but how did they get there? How did they get elected? And how did you know people come to them with casework? If if their job is to debate and make the laws in Parliament, right? But how does those bills get laid? Are there suggestions? 
What's the case we're bringing to the Palace of Westminster? Well, this is the thing with the right of the people to assemble, speak in their houses, um, get evidence in the writ of the petition, and late and hand it in. And obviously, you know, what, whatever in public, um, th there's more of a case. The more and more I learn about this, there's more and more of a case for us being more of a police role in public, collecting evidence, um, meeting, um, forming, you know, um, people together and so forth. Um, uh, and, and you know, advertising it to get more, sign more public support, and then handing the case to the Parliament to secure in the Chamber to debate openly and fairly with free speech and illegal prosecutions by the King's Bench for doing so. It seems to me, therefore, that um, I think that you know, have, have, have MPs got full immunity? Because I don't think they've got any less than us for those engagements. And we have a role to play, which has to be acknowledged, which is the equivalent of the police force. It's out of parliament. Now, I uploaded a video the other week with that, you know, 007 scene in it, you know, when the um you know that the police are you know and they're having a shooting match so we're not allowed any weapons in parliament but yet they have police in parliament so the police ended up getting in parliament armed the, the reason you're not allowed any weapons in there is so you can end up in an armed conflict now if one it's almost like giving the referee a gun on a football pitch saying no weapons on the football pitch but letting the referee have a gun now if the referee's got a gun he can shoot somebody with it but they're arguing that, oh, no, the police need to be armed in Parliament for defence. No, the, the principle is Parliament will be secured, you know, so there can't be any weapons in there. You know, so, you know, it would suggest that, you know, the, out, the outside perimeter of Parliament would be surrounded with checks and secured, but not, not inside. You can't have armed police walking around on the inside with guns because then you've got weapons in there. The whole point of no side having weapons is so uh, none can use a weapon to attack the other side. Now, you can't just say, oh, the police are on a side, the referee, because... <laughs> <laughs> but, but they are aside because they're a person who's armed and this is the whole thing like when it comes down to the old campaign you know this is the conundrum of the old campaign you know um you know the, the police seem to you know think that they can do no wrong but yet it's assisted offenders we allow them to break the law their old job and career is breaking the law but we never had a dedicated police force with their career breaking the law because it was the people who were the police who were allowed to do it for those purposes now it's been the role has been taken over by a specialist organization and then you get the situation with robert f kennedy and the cia you know wants to break up into a thousand pieces and scatter it to the wind why because they've formed a party an armed party who are regularly who were assisting them to break the law on a regular basis and that is something but they're like, oh, referee, referee. Why does the referee wear the black and white stripes like they should be in prison? You know, I, you know, this is the thing. The referee's trying to get, you know, you know, like they're doing nothing wrong. But I think they are. And I think that scene in 007 is a good example, you know. Where, you know, you can't have someone in there armed because then they can use the arms, you know. You're meant to secure the building so that there isn't any arms in there, you know. Um... But anyway, so, I don't know, there, there are definitely clauses in here which further the simple Ofcom rules and regulations. You know, where did those rules even come from? So I would say to Professor Tim Wilson that he needs to scrutinise this act, which he might have overlooked or not been aware of, and re-challenge re the select committee, re-challenge Ofcom, um, you know, because, you know, you know, my channel's been taken down from YouTube at the moment. I don't have it up there, but yet Mog's on TV when he's not supposed to be on there. So if Mog's allowed to be on there, then, you know, on the merit of this blue line here, if he thinks that applies to everything, then, you know, I want my channel back up. If, 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 if this blue line doesn't apply to everyone, then, you know, Mog can come back down because, you know, the other pages of this act clearly state that, um, he's not allowed 
to be in that position, no matter what type of program it is. It's the fact of it's who he is and what his engagements are, not what the program is or who's running the program. That's that's the point. 